These are snails that very cleverly absorb parts of their environment. The scientific name of this group is Xenophora, the carrier of foreign objects. They are also known as collector shells or carrier shells. These animals collect objects from their immediate environment and glue them onto their shells. Volcanic pebbles, dead shells. Encrusting their shells with found objects helps the animals in two ways. By reusing, by recycling objects that in many cases were created by another animal for that specific purpose. It strengthens the shell at a very low cost in energy. It also provides a very high degree of camouflage. These animals obviously would be invisible on sea bottoms composed of these materials. What gives thorny oysters their names, fairly obviously, are these long spines with which the shell is covered. The thorny oysters begin life floating in the plankton. Once they stop floating around in the plankton, they don't move anymore. The lower shell is covered in frills. These frills reach out until they find something that they can strongly stick to. That can be a rock, it can be a piece of coral, it can be a reef. In life, these oysters actually look like this. The top part of the oyster is a garden. The spines on the upper shell have been trapping floating algae. And those have settled down in between the spines and started to grow. In this mature specimen, we can see that the, on the underside of the shell, the frills have done their job. The mollusk has attached itself here, and the frills now have turned also into spines. So both the upper and lower part of the shell are now trapping floating algae and turning the whole animal into a thick mat of marine plants that will render it invisible to all other organisms. <laughs> <laughs>